Hello, hello. Um, this is like my 637th time recording this video today. There has been so many mishaps and bloopers. So I'm just done. We're just doing this. If you have not seen my videos before, uh, head over to my Instagram page. They're full of this kind of shenanigans. So if it's not your thing, I'm not going to be your person and that is okay. You don't have to come back here. If you're down for some shenanigans and, and mishaps and stuff, I'm here for you. This is going to be, I'll be great. We'll be great. <laughs> you and I, we got this. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to show you how to use some of my um, beaded templates for beaded earrings and things like that. Some of my bead templates in the Procreate app on iPad, okay? This is not um, all kinds of great tips and tricks that are for anybody for their Procreate app. This is just really specific to using my templates in the Procreate app. I get a lot of feedback from people that they're new to it. They really are not understanding certain aspects of it. So I'm just going to show a few little helpful tips. To start off, you're going to have your app open. You're going to take this little plus sign over here and you're going to open a new eight and a half by 11 page. It's going to show it um, in the horizontal, horizontal, no, landscape, portrait. <laughs> See what I mean? We're already into the little mishaps. So it's going to show you in the portrait orientation. We want to have it in the landscape or horizontal orientation. So you're going to go over to this little wrench. You're going to do insert photo. You're going to find the JPEG that you downloaded from my Etsy shop. And then you've got it on there. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab this layer. So that's your layers tab. You're going to grab your layer, pull it to the left and duplicate. And we're going to duplicate it again. Duplicate, duplicate, whichever you prefer is what I just said. <laughs> you're going to do that a couple times. I'll show you in a minute why we're doing that. Another really helpful thing I find is to add a layer on top so that if you want to draw out a pattern when you're kind of planning your ideas and you're like, I really want a heart on here, then you can draw your idea and you're not drawing it straight onto the actual template. You're drawing it on the layer above. Then you're going to select your template layer. You're going to start filling in your heart. Okay. So speaking of filling in the layer, I'm just going to remove that little heart there for a sec. So when we're filling in our layer, it used to be you had to drag and drop every single bead color. Why did I pick the Procreate app back then? Not sure. I loved it. I'm a big fan of Adobe. So I, I was using it for other things and it really worked for me. A change they made in the last few months is see that little color dot following me around. That is really handy when you're trying to make sure you're putting the color into the right area. Another thing they've done is you can click continue filling. Then you just touch on the beads that you want the color into. Isn't that handy? Especially for those of us using Procreate app to create things like this, these bead graphs, it makes a ton of difference, especially on your wrist. I'm not young anymore. Dragging and dropping the whole time, not my favorite thing. Um, a lot of other apps, this is normal. So it was really nice to see that this change was done recently. So another question I very commonly get is when somebody is dragging their color over or dotting it in there, as it were, when you do that, see this blue bar? This is your threshold. So you slide it to the left and the color is a little bit, um, less intense and less barrier driven. So hitting the barriers on your color. When you have it to the right, that is when it's going to jump outside of your barrier. So that's what happens. Okay. If you drag it to about 50%. Okay. So here's another little tip when you want to back up a step, each backing up of a step is a two finger touch. Okay. So two contact points, touch, 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 and you're, you're backing up a step so you can see my color dots disappearing. Three fingers, that was four, three, goes forward, okay? Those are helpful also because if you're going and you're coloring in a lot of dots and you're like, okay, I, I liked it up until right there, 
That's what I liked. That's, it's a super handy thing to know. So two fingers is back up a step, three fingers go forward a step and you can, there's a certain amount of clicks that will allow you to do. It's in the like fifties or sixties. Don't quote me on that. It's something like that. Um, that's helpful. So when you have your threshold, so you can see your blue line here, your threshold's at about 50. That's kind of the ideal spot for filling in the beads. If you have your threshold higher, then it starts to way overflow the beads. So you want to drag that back until it's at 50. Okay. Thereabouts. You don't have to like sit and go, Oh my God, it's not at 50. Where do I put it? Um, you'll find when you're coloring that you also sometimes accidentally hit the barriers of the beads. That's where that double tap comes in really handy. You can just back it up a step. So when do we want to use that extra layer that we added? Well, I find sometimes when I'm creating uh, my designs and I'm a good portion of the way through the design, I maybe won't like how the bottom is shaping up or I won't like how a section is shaping up in it. So when there's bigger sections, as opposed to just backing up your beads or, or moving through the most recent changes you've done, um, when there's whole sections that you're not keen on, you can erase. So tap that little eraser. You can do that with your finger or your Apple Pencil. If you have an Apple Pencil, you can double click. So there's no clicking. I'm just tapping it. Double tap and it will switch between your paintbrush and your eraser. Okay, so I'm on my eraser. You have a couple ways to erase what you're working on. So if you're on your eraser or on your paintbrush, these are your dials that control your, op your opacity or your opacity. Okay, it gives you the example as you're dragging it. Most of the time I have mine at 100%. And this is the size of your pen nib, basically. So when you're erasing, you can either move it to very small and then just erase particular beads. So some of the designs like my mountain design or the retro garden design, sometimes I would have to drop in and erase a few of the colors because I didn't quite like what was going on there and I wasn't sure what color I was going to put there. Sometimes you can just grab your new color and not do that. Um, grab your new color and fill in the bead with it. Um, and it will work. Sometimes you'll do that. And if it's a darker color, it's going to bleed into the entire framework of your template. So erasing sections is a great way you can go and say, you know what, I don't like this whole section right here. If you're going and erasing sections like this, then what you can do is grab your layers and you can click the layer you're on and merge down. That then fills in that gap that you just erased and you can actually tell because I accidentally colored in my framework on that previous layer and you can see where the new layer is coming through there. Okay, so those are a few little tips and tricks to using these templates. Um, sometimes I won't like anything that's going on in a particular design that I'm doing. So I've grabbed the, um, that tool, that one, it's called second to the left tool. I don't know what it's called. Um, <laughs> I did not claim to be a professional procreate user. So I'm selecting, Oh, it's a selection tool. That's the name. See, we get there eventually. So I'm selecting it. I'm going to cut it right out of that layer. And that's actually showing my, that section cut out of the layer I'm on, and I can then merge down to the previous layer. So sometimes I'll create a whole sheet of different versions of a design I'm working on. Um, and that's a really nice, easy way to either cut out a whole one of them that I don't like, or sometimes I'll just cut out like a top section of it and drop down to the bottom where I've created a different, you know, different tail fringe or something. So those are some quick tips and tricks for you using the templates that I've created in Procreate. Um, I hope you have fun. You can find the templates at the Pacific Thread in my Etsy shop. Have a great day.